Hi everybody, it's a bit of a breezy day out here today, but a dry and good day for some off-ice stick handling practice. And today at Marcel's Hockey School, I'll be going over the important points that you should be focusing on during your stick handling training. There's tons of good drills out there. I've posted a whole bunch of drills as well. You can check them out, but it's not about the drills. It's how you do the drills that's gonna count. So here are the key points that you should be focusing on when you're working on your dangles. So we'll start with the basics. Let's talk about your hand positioning first. I'm sure that a lot of you have been focusing on some of these points and that's really good. We'll just go over them for good measure. So top hand should be gripping the stick fairly hard. We're not fairly tightly. We're not crushing it, but it shouldn't be too loose. Bottom hand on the other hand is a little bit looser. So bottom hand is an interesting thing. Actually, I was working with one of our under 20 players last week who actually has pretty good hands, but we were doing a figure eight drill and he was gripping the stick down here. So he was having really big problems here coming around. He wanted to get the stick in front of his body, but he was gripping the stick so low that his top hand was way up and he kept whacking the stick here into the side of his stomach. So the bottom hand should be gripping approximately, if you put your elbow on your glove and then grab it, and then I would say slide it just a tiny bit. And that's a good position for your bottom hand. You definitely don't want it on the bottom part of your stick. And now when I, for example, do the figure eights, I have a lot of room here in front of my body to get my top hand here and I have the mobility that I need. If I wanted to cross over like this, which I don't necessarily need to do, it's not a big problem. But if I have this, boom, then it is a big problem. So make sure your bottom hand is also in a good position. Now let's talk a little bit about the wrists. See a lot of beginners and they stick handle like this. That's chopping onions and I love being in the kitchen. Some of you know that, but we are not in the kitchen right now. We don't wanna be chopping any onions. So your wrists need to be rolling. Most of this motion is going to be coming from your top hand, but that doesn't mean your bottom hand does nothing. It does collaborate a little bit with your top hand. It helps out a little bit. So make sure you're rolling those wrists over. Like I said, most of the motion is coming off your top hand, but we wanna be capping the puck on the forehand as well on the, as on the backhand if possible. And now what you might have actually even heard, my stick handling when I'm capping the puck and rolling those wrists is a lot quieter than when I'm doing this. So just listen to yourself when you're stick handling. If you're quiet, that's probably a pretty good sign that you're actually doing a really good job. So, Puck position, another very key point. What I see with a lot of beginners, the puck is a little bit all over the place. You see it kind of went onto my tip here. And then if the puck is too close to my the tip of my blade, then the chances that it's gonna roll off the blade are fairly good. So for most stick handling movements, we wanna have the puck fairly close to the heel of our blade, because then if the puck does roll a little bit, it still ends up in the middle, which is still gonna be okay, but it's not rolling off of the blade. So keep the puck close to the heel. Of course, if we wanna do a movement like a toe drag, then we do have to put on the toe, but this is a completely different movement compared to just regular stick handling. Puck on the heel, and then if the puck does slide a little bit, then it's still on the middle, and nothing bad happens. So now we're gonna get into the slightly finer points. So I find compared to on ice, off ice, when we're doing drills, we, we tend to go through the motions a little bit and we often have our heads down. So I'm just gonna put this puck out of the way quickly. So I see a lot of players and I know myself, I'm guilty of it as well. I'm doing figure eights and I'm going for speed and I'm looking at the puck the entire time. I mean, the puck's going quite well, but I do not, see anything except for the puck. So it's really important off the ice is a great place to work on it when you're, when you're stick handling. I mean, even just starting with the basic stick handling here and then puck beside, try to have your head up. That doesn't mean you have to be looking up the entire time like me. That's not game realistic either, but look down at the puck and then look back up. 
and then look down at the puck and then look back up. You can obviously incorporate this into drills. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but I'll do a figure eight and I'll look up in the middle and then I'll do the figure eight. Whoa, a green biscuit not sliding on this part, really rough here. And I got my head up and I got my head up again and I got my head up again and I got my head up again. Makes the drill definitely more difficult but it helps a lot. Also on a slalom, slalom drill, for example, over here, then I can go through and I took a quick peek at the camera and you notice it's getting hard actually for me to talk to you at the same time, but I'm looking through the camera and I got another, another view to the camera there. So try to get your head up as much as possible. So another important point, which is often looked over a little bit, off high stick handling, a lot of it is done stationary and that's totally fine. Like I love to do my figure eights standing still as a warm up. I mean, that's great. Just get the hands going, but it is important to move your legs and even more important, try to disengage those legs from your hands. What I mean, I often give my players once they've mastered the eights, I give them the walking eight. So I tell them walk around the pucks in a circle while doing the figure eights with the hands. Cognitively, that's extremely hard for them. What often happens is this, and they also end up going through or they'll be going here around with the hands and then they'll stop and then go back the other way. We want our legs to be doing something different than our feet. So I'll give you an example here what I sort of want. When I do the walking eights, I'm gonna be moving my hands around like this and my feet are going around in a circle. And then I might have my hands over here and my feet are here and that's great. This is exactly what I want. And I also wanna be moving my hands in a different tempo than my feet. So my feet are doing something else and my hands are doing the eights and that's really good for my brain and really effective for on the ice. I'll just gonna go over a few more examples here. A little bit more complicated drills, but a lot of fun. For example, with the soccer ball. So my feet are gonna be doing, kicking the ball and I'll be doing dribbling, but it often looks like this. As you can see, well, I'm losing the ball. As you can see though, it's just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth back and forth. So how can I make this a little bit more effective? I don't want my feet always going in the same rhythm of my hands. Well, I could do, for example, this back and forth and then a couple of quick stick handles, back and forth, back and forth, add a couple quick stick handles, add a toe drag in there, which is awfully hard or get the puck over on this side. So I'm not moving the ball between my feet back and forth and the puck at the same rhythm in front of my body back and forth. Just gonna grab a stick quickly and show you one more example of this. So really simple drill, just got a stick here on the ground and just going over and then going back over and going back over and going back over. And now I got my head up even, which is great. But I don't know if you just noticed when I'm over here, the puck's here. When I'm over here, the puck's here. So what if I, disengaged my hands from my feet and did this. And I got the puck on the other side and I moved it over. And now I'm back to where I was. And then I moved it over, moved it over, and moved it over. And you can see it's kind of hard to do this really effectively if you're really trying to disengage the hands from the feet. But it's a really, really good thing. Disengage those hands from the feet and get those feet moving. And the final point for your off ice stick handling training or also on ice even is use weight shifts. I think I harp on this every stick handling videos I do. You know that I'm not a really big fan of sliding the hands. I don't think that's really game effective. Of course, if the puck's way far ahead, then I have to pull it back and then I can slide my hands in a vertical plane, but not in a horizontal plane. What often gets left out, we tend to slide our hands and our body stays in the middle. So practice weight shifts off ice or even on ice. So when I do a move, my whole body is coming out. Then I'm doing another move and my whole body is going the other way. I'm going, I'm moving, moving one direction, other direction. And my body is going 
with the puck. I am shifting my weight and that's how you're going to deke out defenders later on the ice. Not just with fancy hands because the defender is just going to be taking a look at your body and say whatever, what the, whatever the hands are doing, it's not a big deal. But your weight shifts are so important to deking out defenders on, on the ice. So make sure you're practicing that off ice as well. So that's it for my key points for off ice stick handling. Transfers over really well on the ice. A lot of similar points on the ice. On the ice we tend to be moving around a little bit more than off the ice, but that's okay for your off season training. Remember, does not matter what drills you are doing. I can make a great drill bad if I don't practice it properly and I can make a not so good drill a lot better if I'm focusing on these key points. So have fun out there stick handling this summer. Hope this video helped you out. If it did, don't forget to click on like and subscribe. See you next time at Marcel's Hockey School.